The Sidewinder and the MTZ-762 are statistically similar weapons, believe it or not. In this video, we're going to deep dive into these weapon stats and compare them side by side to see which battle rifle is better. With this being a worst to best video, I will ultimately be rating each of these weapons out of 5 stars and sharing class setups at the end. Let's jump into things starting with the mobility stats. Both weapons have the same ADS and Sprint 2 fire speeds, which are about average for the battle rifle class. Movement speed is virtually the same for both of these weapons. The Sidewinder's strafe, crouch, and sprint speeds are faster than the MTZ, but only by a slight margin. Both weapons have 20 rounds in the mag, although the Sidewinder reloads slightly faster at 2.8 seconds. Now if we open this up to the entire battle rifle class, including the Modern Warfare 2 weapons, both these reload speeds are average. If we're looking exclusively at the Modern Warfare 3 rifles, the Sidewinder is technically the fastest, so it does have a slight edge here, although not by much. Accuracy stats are essentially the same between both these rifles too. Flinch, idle sway, hip fire, they're all pretty much the same. There is a slight difference in the hip fire max spread, but again, thin margins here. The first major difference between these two weapons is with bullet velocity. The Sidewinder has the worst bullet velocity in class at 540 meters per second. This is not good. This is submachine gun bullet velocity speed. It is horrible and something that you should consider boosting for the Sidewinder. The MTZ-762 is part of a four-way tie for best bullet velocity in class at 790 meters per second. That brings us to damage. Now if you didn't know, battle rifles perform it differently in full auto and semi-auto. They actually have different fire rates and will deal different amount of damages depending on which mode you're in. I want to tackle the Sidewinder first. Now the optimal way to use the Sidewinder is in full auto. The most attractive thing about the Sidewinder, actually probably the only attractive thing about this weapon, is that it can two-shot headshot within its first two range falloffs. If you can manage to do this, you'll land yourself an insane 160 millisecond time to kill. This is the fastest full auto time to kill in the game, at least between the weapons that I've looked at so far. This is outgunning everything except one shot headshots for the most part. Outside of headshots, the Sidewinder will be a three shot anywhere to the body up to 37 meters, giving you an okay time to kill of 320 milliseconds. Beyond 37 meters, you're going to be looking at a four shot kill, and your time to kill here is the slowest between the Modern Warfare 3 rifles. It's also possible to get a five shot kill at this range if you fail to land three body shots. This will be hard to do, but if it does take you five shots to kill with the Sidewinder, there are sniper rifles in this game that can outgun you in two shots, just to put things into perspective. Switching over to semi-auto doesn't appear to change your fire rate for the Sidewinder, or if it does, it's a negligible difference. Semi-auto makes it possible to get a three-shot kill at any range. Now, a spoiler alert for the recoil session coming up, but recoil is really bad on the Sidewinder, and semi-auto doesn't seem to reduce recoil whatsoever. It's going to make it challenging to land three consecutive shots at long range where the semi-auto actually makes a difference in your time to kill. Personally, I don't think there's any reason for you to ever switch the Sidewinder over to semi-auto. Changing gears to the MTZ-762 in full auto, this can four shot anywhere to the body up to 45 meters, which is actually worse than the Sidewinder. However, the MTZ keeps the 4 shot kill beyond 45 meters as long as you can land your shots to the upper body. 333 milliseconds is an absolute meta time to kill at this range. I mean, even if you end up getting the 5 shot kill at long range, you're going to be outgunning a majority of weapons including the legendary Bass B battle rifle. Long range combat is the MTZ 762 specialty in the full auto mode. Switching the MTZ over to semi-auto actually makes the weapon more well-rounded. If you have a trigger finger and decent aim, semi-auto is the optimal way to use this weapon. The fire rate drops to 477 rounds per minute, but damage increases so you can 3-shot kill to the upper body for a 252 millisecond time to kill. 
This is top tier, again outgunning meta weapons like the Bass B. Once you hit 45 meters, your three shot radius shrinks to the chest and stomach only. If you hit any arms, it will be a four shot kill. And if you end up getting a majority of leg shots, it will be a five shot kill. The five shot kill is bad, but four shot kill is similar story to the full auto MTZ. Close range, it's not that impressive. Long range, it's pretty impressive. Everything I just shared is, of course, theoretical. These are all values on paper. If you can't land your shots, your time to kill is going to be higher. Landing your shots with the Sidewinder is just... You're seeing it for yourself. The, this gun has the worst recoil in the game. It kicks incredibly hard. Its recenter speed is incredibly slow. So when you hold the trigger down, your weapon just keeps climbing higher and higher and higher. And then all this carries over to the semi-auto mode too. No matter what you do, the gun's going to be bouncing all over the place. The MTZ 762 has a strong first kick, but then its recoil is what I would consider standard. It can become very manageable when you start adding attachments, but unfortunately, there's no way to completely eliminate that first kick. I've tried a lot of attachment combos, and that first kick always seems to be there, which can be a problem when you're trying to take advantage of this weapon's strengths in long range combat. That's all these stats. So, to recap, the Sidewinder has an average to mediocre time to kill, it kicks like a mule, and it has terrible bullet velocity. The only redeeming trait it has is its two-shot headshot, which is incredibly powerful. Whereas the MTZ 762 in full auto is great at long range, but otherwise also mediocre. It becomes incredibly lethal in semi-auto if you can land center body shots, and it does have a first shot recoil problem that can make the MTZ tricky to use, but don't get it twisted, it's nowhere near as tricky to use as the Sidewinder. There's not much else to say other than to give these weapons a rating. Out of 5 stars, I give the Sidewinder two stars. It's a two star weapon and that shouldn't be no surprise. Or perhaps that is a surprise because maybe you were expecting this weapon to be given one star. The Sidewinder does have a lot of drawbacks but we can't ignore that two shot headshot. That does give the Sidewinder some value. If it wasn't able to two shot it would be one of the few one star weapons that Modern Warfare 3 offers. As for the MTZ 762, I think it's best classified as a 3 star weapon. What holds this weapon back from being 4 stars is that first shot recoil. It's always going to be there and it prevents it from being reliable at long range where this weapon excels. I personally think semi-auto is only really useful in close to mid range combat because of this recoil. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like you're guaranteed to miss a shot when you start stretching out your gunfights to those longer ranges, and for every shot you miss, you're going to be drastically increasing your kill time. So overall, I think the MTZ is average. Some players will be able to pop off with it, others will hate it, but if you were to pick one of these weapons over the other, the answer will always be to pick the MTZ 762 over the Sidewinder. If for some reason you still want to use the Sidewinder to make it usable, I recommend just stacking up on all recoil attachments. I can't imagine there's a better way to kit this weapon with how hard it kicks. This is personally what I use. It still has a decent amount of recoil, but at least I can land some shots with it. For the MTZ, I also stack a lot of recoil attachments with the exception of a laser. I used to use the skeletal vertical grip for faster handling speeds, but I ended up replacing that with an optic because accuracy counts with this weapon when you're using it in semi-auto, and I found it hard to track targets the further they were away from me with the iron sights. This video concludes worst to best for the battle rifles. Next up is going to be that ultimate battle rifle worst to best ranking where I rank the Sidewinder, the MTZ, and the Bass B alongside all of the Modern Warfare 2 battle rifles. I love doing those videos. If you haven't seen one, make sure you get subscribed so you get notified when that video goes live. Please don't forget to tap like on this video if you found it helpful or were entertained. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll catch you all on the next one.